Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I found in my travels. Today, it is Short Story Tuesday, a fine day to talk about some short-form literature that I have read. Uh, And today, I will be talking about a short story that is about a a suspiciously strong uh, young orphan girl. I am referring to Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lindgren, which was published in 1945. For those who don't know, Astrid Lindgren is a, or was, uh, a Swedish author uh, who lived uh, in the 1900s, dying, I believe, in 2002. Uh, She was mostly known for writing children's literature, including Pippi Longstocking, as well as several other Swedish stories, that some of which were translated into English. Uh, She's probably one of the most successful authors to come from Sweden because Pippi Longstocking has been made into a number of movies, uh, both abroad and here in the United States. Uh, she's also regarded as sort of an advocate for children, uh, believing in their uh, their autonomy and their, their right to dignity and um, to be considered their own people. Uh, uh, which you see in some of her, uh, in her literature, including Pippi Longstocking, as that character is presented as fully capable, even if she is a, a young girl. Um, and yeah, she, she's had a number of biographies and other literature, uh, written about her too. I don't know too much else about her, but I do know that one of my Danish friends, uh, who is, uh, you know, that Denmark is right next to Sweden. Um, I know that he spoke pretty highly of, of Astrid, uh, so she, even though I might not have heard of her, I'm sure she's probably a bigger deal in Europe, uh, which I think is, is really cool. And so anyways, without further ado, let's talk about Pippi Longstocking. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So Pippi Longstocking, of course, focuses on the main character of Pippi. Uh, the, the narrator notes that she has no mom or dad at the moment as her mom uh, uh, died um uh, pretty early in her life, and she believes that her mom is just an angel in heaven looking down on her now, uh, and she feels very nice about that. And her dad, uh, she went sailing with him on the seven seas and 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 whatnot. Uh, it appears that he might have been a pirate, uh, which is <laughs> very unusual. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, he his ship one of one when he went sailing one time, his ship sank, and so now Pippi believes him to be stuck on. Um, some sort of island with cannibal natives, and he might have been made into the cannibal king. Although Pippi doesn't know that, she she's choosing to remain positive in this endeavor. Uh, and so uh, she roams about the land, and she finally um, enters into a certain village. Uh, where she decides to move into there and she uh, either buys a house with the the pirate money she has or she just she's just squatting there it's not really clear but during this time she runs into I believe their names are Tommy and Anika um, I might be wrong there uh, but yeah uh, they're uh, next door neighbors friends and they, uh, they choose to hang out with Pippi uh, because she's an unusual character, but they have fun with her. Uh, while they're hanging out, they see a ma- uh, a small boy named Bent ben- or something like that. I don't know how to exactly pronounce it. But he's hanging out with some of his friends who are bullying a child named Willie. And uh, Pippi stands up to that child and they go on uh, on their way, which is which is nice. Uh, you see Pippi standing up for other people there. Uh, the police quickly show up a uh, short while later. They ask Pippi to go with them so she can go to a home uh, or a, um, uh, a a children's home where, for children who don't have parents. But Pippi asserts that she wouldn't be able to bring her horse, so she's choosing not to go. And the police really decide that they can't do anything at that point, so they they decide to leave as as well. Uh, uh, Ta- Tommy and Anika both convince Pippi to go to school, but Pippi quickly finds that she does not uh, like it, mainly because the 
They're asking her a lot of questions that she doesn't find very helpful about math and uh, reading and, and all sorts of things like that. And so she just decides she's going to quit, uh, which is probably a, um, a relief to the teacher who was quickly growing annoyed with Peep Pippi. Uh, she's also seen climbing a tree with her friends, which is a lot of fun. She has a picnic and she also encounters a bull. And in order to calm the bull down, she tears off one of its horns, which is, again, unusual. Pippi's shown having great strength for, for unclear reasons. Pippi makes her way to a circus with her friends, uh, and she annoys the ringleader there, uh, but also the ringleader challenges anyone in the audience to fight the ma mighty Adolf, uh, who is a, uh, a strong man at the circus. Pippi volunteers, which again annoys the ringleader, but Pippi quickly beats up the mighty Adolf, uh, and he is, is very un unhappy about this, uh, but he win uh, she wins the money that the ringleader was offering there. Uh, on, on, on another occasion, uh, Pippi and her friends are invited to a coffee party, and uh, Pippi in, ends up eating all the pie and, and making everyone very frustrated with her there. Uh, and then and later in the town, there's a giant fire in one of the taller buildings. And thanks to Pippi's quick thinking and her use of a, of a rope, she manages to get into the building and save uh, a couple of the children there. And so the town regards her as a, as a hero in that regard. And then as the story ends, uh, Pippi has a birthday party uh, uh, where uh, she celebrates with her uh, with her friends, and it's a it's a great time. And she invites them to go into her attic, where there are a bunch of ghosts. But when there aren't any ghosts in the attic, Pippi asserts that they've gone to some ghost and goblins meeting, uh, which um, uh, is kind of kind of strange. Uh, it, it, maybe the ghosts are part of her imagination. Maybe they're not. And as her friends leave, she notes that she wants to be a pirate in the future. In terms of analysis, there is a lot to talk about here. Um, although I should note that everything that I say, you should you should you should listen to it with like the knowledge that this is a children's story. So I might be going too far into depth at this at any point in time, but it's still worth talking about. And so one of the ideas that Astrid Lindgren is presenting here is the idea of, the, of children's magical thinking, how children often don't come up with the logical answers to, to the problems they face in life. Uh, like instead of going with the police to uh, to the children's home, uh, uh, Pippi just says that she uh, they're not going to accept her horse. They're going to tell her that she's going to have to get rid of her horse because her horse can't stay at the... Uh, um, at the uh, at the children's home, and so she's just not going. And I think the police realize that there's no arguing with Pippi, and so that they ju they just let her let her stay in that house, uh, which she which she got with the the pirate money that she's apparently hoarding onto, and uh, the the police are. Like they 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 just deal. They just live with the fact that Pippi's doing that. Uh, but also Pippi's own handling of the horse is interesting because she says that the the horse has to stay in a certain part of the house because the parlor wouldn't wouldn't be fit for a horse, uh, and and none of the back rooms would would be as well. And I just find that very very hilarious, very funny, very weird because uh, any part of the house is a strange place to put a horse. But Pippi thinks that a certain part is better than than the other. The way that she handles the ghost when there's no ghost uh, in the attic, she's just like, she, she just says that there's, the ghost are, and goblins are in a meeting. So she could be lying about this. She does lie pretty frequently, or it's suggested that she's lying because she couldn't have possibly done everything she did uh, that she says she did in this story. And then when she's going to school, she's like, oh, I, I don't need to tell you what this, this math answer is because uh, you, you already know it yourself, so why are you asking me? And why do I have to say all these letters? It doesn't make any sense. Of course, it all, it's also the case that Pippi doesn't know how to count, uh, which we see when she's counting her money. So maybe like she should actually be going to school. It's that children's magical thinking where not everything's logical, and some things just seem to work in, a, in an unusual manner that I think uh, Lindgren is, is getting at here. And of course, uh, Lingren is also talking about the idea of standing up for others, uh, because Pippi defends Willie from the bullies in this story, uh, and she's not content with things being unfair or uneven for others. She wants others to partake in her fun and, ha and enjoy life too, and if she sees anyone 
you know, uh, pushing people around, she's gonna she's gonna speak up and say something about that. And so that's a fun, uh, or not not only a fun, but a great message to be sending to children uh, that you should you should um, speak out or be, like defend those who are being targeted by others. Uh, and then uh, Lingdren also talks about adaptability and resilience, uh, where things aren't too easy for Pippi. She lives on her own. Uh, her mom and dad aren't there. And she's constantly being told to do this or that or this or that. Uh, and it's it's not really something that Pippi wants to do. Uh, but uh, like some of the problems, other problems that she's dealing with are, again, are the missing parents, but also uh, some robbers show up and try to rob her house. Uh, but she <laughs> like she out- outsmarts them, which is very funny. And so uh, like even in the face of adversity, Pippi has a positive attitude. If, if she doesn't have a mother, she's just like, well, uh, my mom is looking down on me from heaven. If she doesn't have a dad. She's like, well, he didn't die in the uh, uh, in the shipwreck. He merely made his way to an island of cannibals, and now he's the cannibal king. And one day, I will be the the cannibal princess. And it, while it does feel like it's denying the reality in which she lives, it's also maintaining a positive attitude in in the face of adversity, knowing that things might one day be better, uh, which I think is a, an important message to send to children. Because, you know, they're along with the great times that they're having with their friends, as we see with Tommy and Anika, there's going to be some unfortunate times and you have to maintain a positive attitude. That doesn't mean necessarily that you should deny the reality in which you live and be and like not be sad at all. It's okay to be sad. Uh, it's just important to have a positive attitude so that you can be resilient and make it through these these bad times. And I think that's a that that is a powerful message, but it's also uh, like very interesting on the part of Lingdren because she's sending this message to children. She's trusting that children will will get this message. And as I mentioned earlier, she is an advocate for children, and you see that here. Like Pippi isn't just your typical child doing things that her, that their parents say to do. Like Pippi is fully capable of doing great things, as are Tommy and Anika. Uh, like they're they they're perfectly capable of advocating for their own needs and and making their way through the world while not being under the thumb of, of their parents or their their the guidance of the adults and so I think like that's a very interesting message to be sending to children too uh, that maybe the adults in your life don't necessarily know better than you uh, again other other people have said that Noel doll for or sorry Roald doll for for example uh, so very interesting messages that LinkedIn is sending out. There. And so those are my thoughts on Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lindgren. Uh, a really solid uh, short story, although technically not a short story as it is a children's novel. Uh, but I did say at the beginning of the month that I was going to read it and I didn't realize how long it was, but it was it was a pretty short read overall. So it was, a, it was more like a novella uh, or novella sized more so than anything else. I do recommend that you read it out there. If not for yourself, then if you have any children or you work with children, this might be uh, an, an, an interesting read to get them to see not only uh, the ideas that Lindgren is talking about, but also the uh, the uh, literature from other countries, which is always important. Uh, if you read this before, or you simply want to comment on something I said here, do so below. Let's have a discussion about Pippi Longstocking, although I, d- I can't imagine it would be uh, a very long or, or intellectually stimulating conversation, but who knows? Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this author uh, and this story if they do not already know. Uh, if, if you're from America, you might not know this author or you might know this uh, this book. I did. I do recall reading it in elementary tree school although that was so long ago and i feel like if you're if you're european you might just already know who this is and until then i wish you the best of luck in your weird and orphaned travels farewell